This is a complete guide to social media policy and strategy for churches. 10 rules I've developed from working one-on-one -on -one directly with hundreds of churches. If you're new to helping your church out with social, this is for you. If you've been at it for a while, this is also for you. The last time I made a video like this was more than three years ago, and that video got published the same month Instagram Reels was announced and released. And so, wow, have things changed in just three years. So let's get started and stick around until the end because I've packaged up this policy into a downloadable template so you can install and implement it in your own church. Rule number one, our efforts on social must be informed by Christ. What is the biblical reason to be on social media in the first place? Perhaps you've encountered resistance in the past from senior leadership on the topic of social because they're uncertain how it might align with the mission of a church. So simply put, embracing the Great Commission means taking the good news to the people. And in the scope of human history, we have never seen anything like social media in terms of attention and scale across all groups, including age, race, gender, income, education, urban, rural, suburban. Social media is used by the majority of U.S. adults daily. It gets better though, because you know, something as powerful uh, as social media that must have a high cost to entry, right? To reach that many people? Uh, no, this can be done for free, which is quite amazing. Of course, now though, we have to confront a follow-up question. How should churches use social media? And again, let's look to scripture, because here's what I see. When Jesus spoke, he often used ideas accessible to the average person as entry points to talk about the kingdom of God. A few examples, agriculture, farming, baking, economics, labor, wine, sheep. The idea here is simple. Find the intersections between faith and culture. Where can the good news cross paths with the lived experiences of the person you're trying to reach? Rule number two, use social media to do ministry, not just promote ministry. What does this actually mean for you? Well, let's look at two examples. In the first example, we have a church using social media to promote an upcoming in-person prayer event that they're hosting. And you know, this is prototypical of how most churches use social media. But instead of inviting people in your church to pray soon, why not invite them to pray now? Like in this post from Legacy Church, three biblical declarations to pray over your marriage. A guided prayer rooted in scripture so people know exactly what to say. And just look at the traction this post got. 35,000 likes and close to 800,000 views. Churches like Legacy Church are doing a great job using social to do ministry and not just promote ministry. And we did a whole podcast with their social media director and production director on the Pro Church Tools show. Link for that on the video itself and also in the description. Rule number three, hashtag no weeks off. Look, every church affecting life change online is different, but they all have one thing in common. They consistently make great content for their community. Social media, it's a long game, and there's really only one key to success. Ready for it? Post content that is valuable to your church for the next 10 years. Why 10 years? Well, because 10 years is a really long time, and that's what relationships demand. Years and years of meaningful investment. You don't have to post every day, but you do need to show up every week and publish. And what might come from that? Well, consider Mosaic Church. This is a church plant that has grown five times over the past few years, with 60% of their new visitors coming from social media. They posted consistently three to five times per week for years, with minimal traction on social, until finally, Boom. And this is what no weeks off can translate to when you keep showing up. In this church, they're in a country of the UAE where they can't even put their address publicly on their website because it's against the law for a Christian church to do that. Just again, showing the power of social media. If you want to hear more of Mosaic's story, we did a podcast with them as well with their lead pastor. It's linked on the video and in the description. Rule number four, reach wide, connect deep. Now, right now, you're looking at analytic screenshots from churches we're working with at socialsermons.com. And this is what it looks like when you have a post that reaches a wide audience on social. Now, these little circles represent the total number of accounts the post reached, the light blue, almost white looking part of the circle is non-followers, the blue part is followers. So these are all typical small to mid-sized churches, and this one here, the post reached close to 13,000 total accounts, and only 73 of those were the church's existing followers. And the other two have similar ratios. And so this is what it looks like when a post reaches wide. But we also want to connect deep. We want social media to invite people to take their next step which is why at the end of every social sermon, we have an end screen inviting people to get connected with the church. This might mean following the account for more. It might mean listening to the full sermon via podcast or on YouTube. 
And what do those invitations actually translate to? Well, that brings us to rule number five. Social media is a springboard for discipleship. Not just views and likes, but actual next steps being taken because of a social media post. Consider this testimony a pastor shared with me. This is a DM this pastor received. Quote, I was scrolling through Facebook and came across a clip of your sermon from yesterday that grabbed my attention. On my lunch break, I listened to your entire sermon. It convicted me and challenged me. I've been hot and cold in my walk with Jesus. To be honest, I've never really fully committed to him, but I know what I have to do now. And I also understand that my repentance has to bear fruit. So let's track this journey. This person watches the sermon clip on Facebook after it grabs their attention. An invitation at the end of that social sermon is made to watch the full message. This person dedicates their lunch hour to doing that, which leads them to recommitting their life to Christ and getting in touch personally with a pastor for pastoral care. Social as a springboard for discipleship. But none of that could have happened if this church missed one important step, and that's rule number six. Stop the scroll. Recall what this person said at the beginning of their testimony. Quote, I was scrolling through Facebook and came across a clip of your sermon that grabbed my attention. Grabbed my attention. The prerequisite to life change and discipleship and people hearing the good news is attention. It's the most valuable commodity that we can possess as churches because without it, it doesn't matter how great our message is because no one will hear it. So what we do is after we've identified a portion of the sermon that would make a great sense for social, we write a hook and put it on the center of the screen for the first three seconds of the video. This is what stops the scroll. It's the promise we make to the viewer. If you give us your time and attention, here's what you'll get in return. Attention must be earned and the hook is how we do that. There's an entire exercise I use and teach for writing great hooks and then turning one sermon into roughly a dozen pieces of content. If you wanna learn that, it's beyond the scope of this video, but just comment below the word exercise in all caps if you want me to talk more about that. You know, I'm never really sure how many people find that type of granular instruction useful. If it is for you, let me know. Post the word exercise in all caps in the comments. Rule number seven, offline and online ministry must work together as allies, not adversaries. Now, I haven't addressed this at all yet, but there are people that will watch this video and think to themselves, look, social cannot replace in-person gatherings, to which I would say, correct, I fully agree with you. But here is what is also true. What we do in person can never replace what we do online. And listen, you might shy away from that idea at first, so let me explain it a bit further. Your week has 168 hours. For most churches, roughly one of those hours is dedicated to an in-person service, but that still leaves 167 hours beyond that where you won't be meeting in person with your church. That also assumes your entire congregation attends service every week, which is unlikely. But, and here's why digital is so valuable, you can still connect with those people online in the 167 hours beyond Sunday service. And this is why fundamentally online and offline ministry need to work together. The mission of our churches is to affect life change and both offline and online ministry play a unique role in making that happen. Going back to rule number five, social media being a springboard for discipleship. I'm not suggesting that discipleship occurs entirely or even primarily through digital platforms. Not at all. That happens best through in-person relationships and the kind of proximity that can only take place face to face. But social media can be the springboard for that in the way it was for that person in the DM. Here's another example from a case study we did with a church that we're working with at Social Sermons. Here's what the lead pastor said to me, quote, I was picking up a grocery order at the supermarket and a guy comes up to me and says, are you a pastor? And when I said yes, he responded, you showed up on my TikTok feed. My wife and I are looking for a church and we're gonna be checking yours out. That full case study is linked in the description, but again, online and in person working together. That's the goal. Rule number eight, repeat the best, forget the rest and continue to test. Here's a social media secret you won't hear very often. Uh, nobody knows what they're doing. You can talk to any person you look up to online and they'll tell you about all of the times they posted content that they were super excited about only to see it fall flat. Inversely, they'll tell you some of their most popular posts were pieces that they thought were subpar. They never could have envisioned them being the posts that took off the way they did. So when you stumble upon a post type that resonates with your audience, use it again and again and again and keep pulling from that well until it runs dry. You know, here's a great example of that. One church. We did a podcast with them on the Pro Church Tools show linked in the description. Their first viral post was from a sermon clip on the topic of parenting. 
Again, there's that intersection of faith and culture, right? Subject matter you'll find in scripture that is also a desperate need for people irrespective of faith background. That's the sweet spot. So when one church noticed this kind of post did well for them, they went back to it over and over again. Their TikTok account now has a quarter million followers. Their Instagram has close to 100,000. Their church is about a decade old. They started with 90 people. Today, they're at 1,800. When you see a post that's working, Repeat it. Legacy Church did the same thing with their bold declarations list post. They did another one. Three declarations to pray over your finances. And another one. Three declarations to pray over your children. And guess what? Those posts popped off too, just like the first one. Repeat the best, forget the rest, and continue to test. That last stanza is really important. You'll want to reserve a small amount of creative energy and space on your social media calendar for trying new stuff because you never know what kind of post might resonate with your audience. There was a time when Legacy Church had never published one of those list post reels, right? If they hadn't continued testing, they never would have stumbled upon it in the first place. Rule number nine, all it takes is one video. Here's a post from a church we're working with at Social Sermons. A few weeks before this, they emailed me saying, quote, Brady, when is it gonna happen for us? You know, we've been following all the best practices, we've been doing what you are saying, but it's just not clicking yet. And then, shortly after that, Boom, more than 10 million views, more than 75,000 shares. Their Facebook page grew 407%. You can read the full case study of this church linked in the description below as well. But this is how online is different from in person. Okay, because sure, we have services in person where more people come than on a typical Sunday, right? Often that's Easter or Christmas. But what happens the week after that? Very few, if any, return. Online is different though. Because if you follow the no weeks off approach and you implement the principles in this policy, you will have a post that reaches a wide audience. And because we're inviting those people to connect deeper with your church, a subset of that audience will follow your church's account, which means the next time you post, you'll have more attention than you did previously. In effect, with every big post, you set a new baseline for your church online and it becomes this positive cycle. How does it start? All it takes is one video. We see it all the time with churches, you just need to stick with them. And rule number 10, I call this the church advantage. Uh, you know, listen up, I know it's not easy to serve in the church. We don't have the resources, the time, the experience or budget that businesses do, but our churches do have something that does not exist across virtually any other industry and it is a massive advantage for us. What is it? Churches are one of the only organizations in the world with senior leaders that already create and share a message every single week. And thanks in part to the pandemic, most of our churches now have video recordings of those sermons, if we didn't before, which means we are all sitting on gold mines of content for social media. Like, imagine you were a real estate agency, a law firm, a dentist's office. You'd need to plan and create for social media above and beyond everything else you already do. But as churches, we can simply rely on our centuries old tradition of preaching the good news from the pulpit and then, bring that creative and spiritual work that has already been done to social media. In effect, we as churches get to skip the first step of social media where we have to come up with ideas. The ideation process is already baked in to the weekly rhythms of church. If you wanna work with me directly, you can go to socialsermons.com. This is where we do all the work for your church on social. You never have to lift a finger. Uh, because this work is all custom, we only have space for about 100 churches. And we sold out every spot in the first week when we launched this service. You can join the waiting list on socialsermons.com. That being said, if you do see the book a call option on the site, if you can click that, that likely means we have a few spots available. I do try to keep two to three spots open as much as I can. If you think you'd be a good fit, you can book a call there. That'll be with me directly. We can see if we're a good match for each other. As promised, I've also put this entire social media policy together into a downloadable PDF so you can implement it and install it in your church. If you scan the QR code on the screen right now, you'll be taken to a page where you can download that in its entirety. All 10 rules with examples and descriptions and diagrams for easy access and reminder. Of course, now that we've outlined our church's social media policy, we now have the freedom and foundation to build out our church's social media calendar. And so in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can take a single sermon and turn that into a full week's worth of social media content from reels to quotes to carousels to text threads to blog posts and even full length YouTube videos. That video is linked on the screen right now. I'll see you there.